Hey, dude. What's hey, up, man? man? What's up? Good. How you doing? I'm good. Awesome. Hey, you want to go for a ride? Yeah. Sick. Let me uh, go change my clothes and grab my bike. Yeah. All right, I'm ready. Let's go check out this cool spot I found. What's up guys? As you may have noticed, I picked up a new bike and that is a 2022 Canyon Torque 29er. Super stoked about it. It's the AL5 version. Let me tell you about it. So I'm gonna run you guys through the pros and cons. I just pulled this bike out of the box and first things first, just look at it. It is beautiful and boy, does this color pop. Canyon calls this the Lil Moyne color, and it's a violet to kind of like a teal mix, and it's got this sweet little pink stay to hold the shock in place. Really stoked on it. One problem with this awesome color is now I can't figure out what kit to wear. So I dressed in all black, but I feel like I need something loud to go with the rest of this bike. If you got suggestions, drop it in the comments below. Another thing about this bike is it is one heck of a deal. Let me tell you guys, I'm pretty certain this is the best deal you can find on an enduro, park, free ride, kind of do it all bike. 170 front and rear, so this bike is down to party and really wants to go downhill fast. That being said, Canyon, they roll this bike out for 2,800 euro, which blows away the competition. I compared this to Commonsol and a couple other brands out there. It's easily 400 euro below. And for Commonsol in particular, they don't even spec those bikes with a dropper post. Canyon, they did this bike right, and I'm really excited to tell you guys about it. Now, there are some serious cons to this bike that I'm kind of upset about, and I'm gonna get to that in a moment. But first, I really wanna highlight the awesome things about the build of this bike because Canyon really did a great job all around. One of the things that they really nailed was the tire selection. Up front, we got an Asagai Max Grip XO Plus casing, which is nearly impossible to find right now. And then rounding out the rear, we've got a DHR2 Double Down. These tires are basically what any enduro downhill rider would be interested in. Next way that they keep the cost down on the bike is by specking it with Shimano Dior 12 speed as well as Dior brakes. And I'm really stoked to try these out. It's my first time using the Dior drivetrain, but it's the exact same as SLX and XT, just a little bit cheaper. It's slightly different in the material that they use. So it's ever so slightly heavier, about 333 grams or three quarters of a pound but you're not even really gonna feel that. And I'm stoked because the performance is nearly identical to XT. Next component that I'm super stoked about on this build is this is an XL frame and Canyon specced it properly with a dropper post, 200 millimeters of travel. I could not be more pumped about that. Out of the box, 200 mil, that's exactly what we need on our frames. I will say though, I had a one up 210 laying around, so I already put that on just because. I'll keep that new 200 mil fresh. If anybody's interested in it, hit me up in the comments and maybe we can make a deal. Additionally, on the torque, it comes with alloy bars, but Canyon put 31.8 millimeter bars on here, and I'm really excited about that because I have the same bars on my Common Saw Clash, and this is definitely the move. I really hope to see more manufacturers, if they're putting alloy bars on, just go with 31.8 because it really reduces the vibration and dampens the ride as opposed to 35 mil alloy bars that are just harsh on the downhill. Short and sweet, next thing I really like, threaded bottom bracket. This is the first mountain bike I've ever owned that had a threaded bottom bracket. And obviously everybody knows it's way simpler and easier instead of dealing with press fit. And while we're down here, another exciting thing, water bottle mounts. I'm super stoked on that. Good to have it back. Canyon also did a nice little favor to us by putting in two mounts right here in case you wanted to mount a tubeless kit or a multi-tool. You can strap that underneath and it has the exact same cage mounts like your bottle. And finally, the last pro on our list before we get to the cons, back to the frame, and that is it is a super unique design. You can't tell in the photos online of this bike, but the way that they just designed this frame and the edges on it, it's super unique and it's pretty cool looking. It's kind of a squared off edge all the way around the frame. I'm not sure if they did this for strength or if it has to do with stiffness and overall riding characteristics, but it looks pretty unique. I haven't seen it done before and I'm stoked on it. All right, so now it's time for the cons and 
This one's a big one for me. Cables, cables, cables. Canyon advertised this bike and the cable management is being on point. Pulling it out of the box, you could tell that is not the case. So directly from Canyon's website, it says internal cable routing. The bike's cables and lines run cleanly through a foam hose inside the front triangle, eliminating rattling and protecting everything from the elements. Now, there may be some truth to this, but as soon as you get to the rear triangle, it looks horrendous. And on top of that, they say that the cables don't rattle, but they rattle. You can hear it, and that's without even really doing anything. So I'm curious, once I actually get this bike on trail, how quiet it'll be. It's just, when you see them advertising silent, uh, you expect silence, so. The cables on the rear triangle, they're held on with zip ties to the chainstay. And for the derailleur, the cable seems like it's hanging a foot off the bike. I'm honestly worried that it might get caught on something at some point, and it's just because the way it's designed and attached to the frame. Even if you shorten the cable, it's still hanging out there. And then there's the brake hose. Because it's only attached by zip ties, I've already fixed this issue twice. I'm having issues with the hose literally hitting the wheel as it spins, because the hose just goes directly into it and there's no way to properly secure it to the frame to keep it pulled away from the wheel. While we're down here talking about the brakes, I do really like the Dior brakes, but one thing I'm disappointed in is that it comes with a cotter pin to hold the pads into the caliper. I can't imagine it costs Shimano that much more to just put some threads in there with a proper bolt but it is what it is, cotter pin will have to do. So this next con, it initially sounds like it's a good thing, and that is it comes with a physique saddle. You hear, oh sweet, physique, that's a nice saddle company. Well, unfortunately, it's not very nice. And I had the same problem with my road bike from Canyon, actually. It comes specced with a super tiny, narrow saddle. If you know anything about saddles, the average width is usually like 143 millimeters. Well, this saddle, it's 130 millimeters. It's so tiny. To me, it's basically a kid's saddle, and it feels awful between your legs, and I'm not even a big person. So I really wish that they wouldn't pull out these bargain basement, who knows where it came from, saddles, and they put something nicer on. Another thing with this bike, I really wish that Canyon would have included a flip chip. Canyon says it's on purpose because they give you the best of both worlds, a 63 and a half degree head angle paired with a 78 degree seat tube angle, which is super nice. But when you spend the extra money and you get the carbon frame, you get a flip chip. And also you get that flip chip and it possibly gives you the opportunity to run a mullet setup. So it would be really nice if they would have done the same for the aluminum. If you ask me, I think Canyon is just trying to get people to spend more on the carbon simply so they can get that flip chip if they want a mullet bike. And I really wish that they would make an aluminum mullet bike. Maybe it'll happen in the future, we'll see. One of the final cons to the torque and actually all Canyon models, do you see something super obvious about this bike that just looks terrible? Yeah, you probably do. And that is these frame stickers right down here. So for some reason, Canyon tells us it's a category five bike, meaning it's downhill capable, but nobody really cares about that. It's apparent that's the case. And then it also says size XL, which again, nobody needs to know what size frame I'm riding. Nobody cares and it looks awful. All they had to do was remove the bike category sticker and then the XL frame, they could slap it down here by the bottle cage and that problem would be solved. But here we are with some gaudy stickers that obviously that's the first thing everybody peels off. Maybe they have to do it for government requirements. I don't know. Now let's button things up. We're done with pros and cons. These are just kind of remaining little bits and pieces that we haven't talked about yet. First, we've got these race face 30 millimeter rims and Shimano hubs. I've got the same ones on my e-bike and they've been holding up super well. So those will be working great. I'm excited about that. And while we're on the wheels, it's a good opportunity to talk about how this is a Shimano group set but it actually doesn't come with Shimano rotors for the brakes. Instead, it has Hayes 203 millimeter rotors. Never used them before. They look pretty similar to what you'd find on a SRAM, but instead they're center lock. So excited to try them out. Out of the box though, the front one was super bent and I had to spend quite a bit of time getting it straight again. I get things happen in shipping, but it makes me wonder how the last long term. A few items we have is the cockpit. So we've got G5 bars, stem, and 
grips and all of those are in-house canyon parts but i gotta say they look pretty nice and this stem is super interesting i've never really seen one designed like this before and the way that it mounts on the top here uh, so that's pretty cool and it'll work and last up to round things out normally what someone talks about first we've got the fork and the shock which is a rock shocks zeb select up front and a super deluxe select plus in the rear you guys already know, I love the Zeb. I think it's great. I much prefer it over the 38. And then a Super Deluxe I haven't tried in years. So I'm excited to be back on one, give that another chance. And I really liked my Fox X2 that was on my Comet Saw Clash. So I'm not too sure that the Super Deluxe is gonna edge it out, but as time goes on, we'll see what happens. With that being said, I'm gonna be putting out some ride review videos in the very near future. So if you wanna see those and follow my journey with this bike, as well as the customizations that I make to it, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell me where to ride next.